not particularly for me because what they've done to me is done, I can't undo it, but it's a good day for all sorts of people who would have fallen victim to them had their paper not shut, absolutely. What remains to be seen now is what happens to the Murdoch Empire. He had the whole of Westminster and the police under a spell, except for Chris Bryant and Tom Watson among the MPs, and now we know a whole section of the Metropolitan Police. That spell's been broken, really initially by the Millie Dala story. And what will now happen is very unpredictable, but I would hope that it'll end up with the Murdoch Empire press and television in this country being broken up, because it's far too much power in the hands of one person. I think they could have been more contrite. I think they could have recognised that what they did was absolutely unacceptable, and that's why the public effectively have shut that paper down, not Murdoch. And uh, they, they could have recognised that. And it's a shame in one way, because they did do some very good investigative journalism, no doubt. And had they stuck to that, they would still be a big, profitable paper. People have realised that it's not just a question of, you know, breaking the law in respect to one or two film stars and people like that, which the public probably don't like, but they can accept. It's something deeply evil, and they've seen that. And I think even if they start up under a new name, Sun on Sunday or something like that, the public know what's behind it. They know the sort of people these are, and they won't buy the paper, I hope, at least. And then they have this attack on me. Well, that was a declaration of war, and at least since I've been back in England last September, I've done nothing except concentrate on various aspects of bringing out into the public domain the full truth about what that group were up to.